Danger Dolan. From cannibalistic natives to cursed villas, we count 10 disturbing stories from mysterious islands. For this video, we're collaborating with our friends over at The Richest, who also have a similar video, 10 Mysteries About Ancient Civilizations Debunked. You might want to go watch that when this video is over, but in the meantime, enjoy! Number 10. Tuburon Island, the largest in Mexico, is a scorching wasteland of treasure, deadly wildlife, and lethal cannibals called the Seri. In 1905, Tom Grindle brought a three-person team to the island to prospect. They expected to be home within a month, but they never returned. Tom's brother Edward followed to find out what had happened and learned that some Americans had been killed on the island. All that was left of them were their hands strapped to long stakes in the center of dance rings. This frightened them because the Seri were known to tie their captives to stakes or driftwood and eat them a piece at a time, relishing their victims' slow deaths. Edward Grindle found his brother's dead mule, rifle, and some of his books, but determined that the hands belonged to someone else. Tom's remains, a pile of bones, were uncovered two years later. They were identifiable only by nearby handwritten documents. Fifty years later, the Seri renounced their cannibalistic ways when the Mexican government threatened action if any more travelers went missing. When asked about their cannibalism, member of the Seri said they liked the flavor of humans better than most game. Number 9. Grunard Island. In 1942, the British government wanted to get in on this whole biochemical warfare fad, so it began experimenting with anthrax on a small island north of the Scottish coast. Grunard Island's small community had long ago vacated, making it the perfect testing grounds. Rather than evolving to some new monster breed, the test sheep they'd brought in died brutally. The original owner of Grunard Island eventually requested his land back, but it was deemed uninhabitable by the Ministry of Supply. The area had not been properly quarantined as the government hadn't even warned mainland residents about what they were doing. Innocent civilians had stood clapping and cheering at the experiments being conducted a hundred meters up the coastline. It wasn't long before anthrax infected human corpses began washing up on the Scottish mainland, infecting other animals. The island was cleansed with water and formaldehyde died. Formaldehyde, that's the one. But it was never livable again and is now a nuclear waste dump. I'm sorry, original owner of the island. But you know what they say, when life gives you nuclear waste, you get the fuck out of there! Number 8. Isola La Gaiola is a beautiful Italian island farmed for its ancient ruins. Once a symbol of wealth, the island is now deserted because of a string of unfortunate incidents that plagued its former owners. Talk of the island's curse began in the 1920s when the owner of a newly built villa was found murdered with his corpse concealed mob hit style in a rolled up carpet. His wife, a strong swimmer, apparently drowned in the gentle Gulf seas soon afterwards. The island was then purchased by a wealthy German who died of a mysterious heart attack during his stay. The next owner went insane and took his own life, as did the son of the next owner. The succeeding heir to the Fiat Empire died of an extremely rare type of cancer on the island, while another owner was suddenly bankrupted after a string of unexpected financial setbacks. Finally, J. Paul Getty's grandson was kidnapped shortly after purchasing the island. The island's last owner was jailed on four charges, and the decaying villa has been abandoned ever since. But hey, you've always got room for toxic waste! Number 7. The Barbados Chase Fault. So Barbados is the crown jewel in the Caribbean islands, but it holds a disturbing secret involving the Chase family tomb. In 1808, the deceased body of baby Mary Chase was placed in a metal coffin in the family vault. Four years later, more tragedy arose with the death of Colonel Chase and the suicide of his daughter, Dorcas Chase. When two pallbearers carried the Colonel's coffin into the crypt, they noticed that baby Mary's coffin had moved and now stood upright in a corner. Thinking someone had broken in, they returned it to its rightful place and made sure the tomb was securely locked. When the crypt was reopened, mourners shockingly discovered none of the coffins were in the original places. Stories spread of terrifying noises coming from the crypt, and a few family horses mysteriously drowned. 
The crypt was reopened later to reveal the coffins had been violently thrown about. To solve the mystery, the governing Lord Combermere poured sand over the floor to reveal the culprit's footprints. When the crypt was next reopened, the coffins had again moved, but the sand was undisturbed. People have since speculated that flood water might have risen up to the limestone floor, moving the coffins as the water receded. It's an interesting theory, but it's not as plausible as ghosts! Number 6. Solovki Prison Monks In the 15th and 16th centuries, the monastery and settlements of Solovki were inhabited by peaceful monks. However, during Ivan the Terrible's reign, the island was slowly converted into a prison colony and Serbian gulag. People who were exiled to the island for treason, petty theft, blasphemy, or for being vagabonds, and were detained in former monastery buildings. The monks still living on the island were forced to work as prison wardens. In 1923, massive military executions began, with more than 2,000 killed in 1937 alone. Prisoners describe horrific conditions like guards dragging up the dead using sea hooks, while prisoners fought to keep them for food. Conditions were unbearable, the monk guards became sadistic, and the work was menial, pointless, and backbreaking. It's a far cry from its origins as a peaceful monastery. Number 5. Sorok Island in Korea has picturesque beaches and a sinister past. It was a Japanese and Korean run leper colony, and those exiled there weren't patients but detainees who were forced into long days of exhausting physical labor. Failing to perform meant a beating, and if they protested about how unfair this was, well, that was another beating. Some patients were left untreated so that doctors could study the disease's natural progression. Others were sterilized. The few who were allowed to marry and have kids were forced to give those children up when they reached school age, and unapproved pregnancies were forcibly terminated. Residents had to bow before a statue of their overseer each morning if they hoped to eat breakfast. A bridge now connects the island with the mainland, but there's still a stigma attached to the Sorok Islanders. Despite being cured of the disease, many have been left permanently disfigured by its effects and the years of neglect. Number 4. Situated south of Hawaii, the sunny Palmyra Atoll is an unlikely destination for a murder mystery. After their wedding, wealthy San Diego couple Malcolm and Eleanor Graham spent six years sailing around the world on their honeymoon. They were beloved by the yachting community and frequently entertained guests. After their return, they decided a six-year sailing holiday wasn't enough, so began another trip to Palmyra. After anchoring in Palmyra, a couple identifying themselves as Roy and Stephanie Allen arrived in a dilapidated old boat. It turned out Roy Allen was actually an escaped convict named Buck Dwayne Walker, and Stephanie was his girlfriend. The Grahams were nervous around Walker as he would do strange things like shoot at fish with his pistol. After a radio call to a nearby friend, the Grahams were never heard from again. Eleven years later, a jury found Walker guilty of killing Eleanor Graham, whose charred body washed up on Palmyra's shores with a gunshot wound, and an acquaintance testified that Walker made Malcolm walk the plank, so it's likely he committed his murder too. The exact sequence of events may never be known, as Walker died of cancer in 2007. Number 3. In 1933, 6,200 people deemed unworthy by the Russian government were exiled to Nazino, a desolate island northeast of Moscow that later became known as Cannibal Island. Most of these were criminals, the unemployed, or those without proper citizenship papers. The relocated were given no tools or supplies, and their only food ration was a supply of raw flour that was dumped on the shoreline. Everyone would trample each other to get to it. The only water was contaminated, and anyone who drank it suffered dysentery. Anyone who attempted to flee the island was shot by guards, even women or children. Originally, Nazino was only a brief stopover on the way to another settlement, however detainees were kept in these horrid conditions for more than a month. Cannibalism started roughly 10 days into the nightmare. One survivor recalled seeing a young girl bound to a tree and chopped into little pieces by starving prisoners. This twisted arrangement was planned and approved by Stalin and was the culmination of a three-year initiative to cleanse Russian streets of so-called undesirables. Number 2. Located off the Italian coast, San Savolo is an island nowadays known for its Museum of Dark History. The museum is a former hospital founded in the 18th century to serve wounded military troops. 
However, when the 19th century rolled round, it became a morocomio, or institution for the insane. The asylum was managed by an ancient religious order known as San Giovanni di Dio, who completely isolated their insane patients as a form of treatment. This made the island setting perfect. The order also taught what they called moral treatment, which is now known by its more common name, torture. The most disturbing thing is that the institution offered counselling and massage services alongside helpings of violence and repression. The museum displays authentic restraint devices like straight jackets, chains and handcuffs, and you can visit rooms where dangerous electroshock therapy was conducted. It's way better than Disneyland. Number 1. George's Island is situated off the coast of Labrador and was a destination of choice for fishermen and holidaymakers before tragedy struck. One day, the schooner Walrus was blown toward the island by a fierce storm. Realizing the ship was headed for the rocks, the captain instructed his men to get into lifeboats so that they might make it safely to shore. All but one crew member drowned after the boat struck and capsized. Or at least that was the story the sole survivor told the fishermen who rescued him. But when another group of fishermen landed on the island later that year, they discovered the mutilated, headless bodies of three men. Further inland, another body was discovered, this time with multiple axe wounds to the head. They also found two tents built from a ship's sail. Seems the walrus's captain and crew had made it to land, only to be brutally murdered Lord of the Flies style by the sole survivor. Perhaps the crew should have been subjected to psychological evaluations. So another huge shout out to the Riches for making this video possible. They do have a very similar topic uploaded. If you guys wanted to go check it out, there'll be links down below and on screen and all over your mum's face. So yeah, that's it for this video. Have a cool-